Today, I have the great privilege of introducing my colleague and friend, Mary Beth Heatwell-Moore. There's so much that I could say about Mary Beth, but our time here is limited, and I was given very specific instructions to be respectful. So that eliminates like half of our stories. But in all seriousness, Mary Beth is a wonderful person. I first got to know her when she and her husband, Chris, along with some friends, realized that there were not many church options for deaf people in the community around the Virginia School for the Deaf and Blind in Stanton, Virginia. So what did Mary Beth and her friends do? They started a church, a church where American Sign Language would be the primary language used, a church where Mary Beth continues to serve to this day as an ordained pastor. Mary Beth has a gift for learning languages, not only American Sign Languages, but the biblical languages as well. I remember how she was so excited when she was beginning seminary because she had the opportunity to study biblical Hebrew and Greek. She has also been recognized for her administrative capabilities by our district and conference. Mary Beth is the assistant chair of the Southern District of Virginia Mennonite Conference, as well as a member of the Faith and Life Commission of Virginia Mennonite Conference. She serves on their subcommittee, the Leadership Enrichment Committee as well. Mary Beth brings a rare combination of academic and social skills. She is relational, spiritual, and intrigued by theological questions. I had the opportunity to participate in Mary Beth's imaginative prayer group, which you'll hear about more here shortly, where she focuses on Ignatian contemplation, which is just as much fun to participate in as it is to say. Say it with me, Ignatian contemplation. I was blessed by my time in this group, as I'm sure you will be as well, as Mary Beth leads us through these practices. I'd like to offer a prayer for Mary Beth as she begins. Please join me. Loving God, we pray for Mary Beth today, not only for clear thoughts and articulate words, but for an ongoing desire to seek you. May the words of her mouth and the meditation of her heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Without further ado, I give you my friend, Mary Beth. Thank you, Kevin Gosser, for that respectful introduction. I am blessed by your friendship, too. Shalom Haver. And Shalom Haverim, peace, friends. Jesus encouraged his followers to become like children. One hallmark of childhood is imaginative play. Children naturally use their imaginations to the, explore the world of possibilities that surround them. In contrast, Many adults do not take the time to nurture the imaginative skills that came so spontaneously to them at younger ages. When interacting with scripture, many forget or refuse to use their imaginations. This has been true for me. I grew up in a Mennonite church with active children's Sunday school and vacation Bible school programs. I have fond memories of playful interaction with scripture as a child. The biblical stories came to life as we acted them out, taking on a variety of characters with each retelling. As an adult, scripture engagement for me has become more intellectual. I have rarely found the same level of creative scripture embodiment as I did when I was in children's Sunday school. That is until this past year when I encountered Ignatian contemplation. By using Ignatian contemplation techniques to play and pray with scripture, I believe that adults like me and you 
can enliven our spiritual connection with Jesus by inviting the Holy Spirit to breathe fresh, life-transforming power into us through imaginative engagement with biblical narratives. These narratives that to us may have become mundane, under-impressive, or overly intellectualized. The author of the first Psalm understood the importance of heartfelt connection with scripture. According to the psalmist, those who continually meditate on scripture will prosper. The Hebrew word for meditate is Haggah. James Waltner in the Believer's Church Bible Commentary on the Psalms observes that the word Haggah is also used in Isaiah 31.4 to indicate the, quote, growling sound a lion makes over its prey, end quote. This reminds me of my cat Guate and his bear. Guate has developed a deep affinity for his bear. Every day for the past 14 and a half years, Guate has Haggad on this bear. Let me show you a video clip. Who doesn't like a cat video? Now this video does not have sound, but he is mewing. Growling like a house cat lion over its prey. I watch him and I wonder how rich my spiritual formation would be if I would haga, meditate over scripture as much as Guate haga's this bear. In their commentary on the Psalms, Walter Brueggemann and William Bellinger write, quote, Psalm 1 urges a lifestyle centered on meditating on divine instruction, end quote. They note the significance of this Psalm appearing at the beginning of the Psalter as a preamble to state the purpose or intent of all that is to follow. They state Quote, the wisdom teacher in Psalm 1 operates from the belief that God created a moral order to life and has observed that openness to divine instruction brings the possibility of full living, end quote. If this is true, the consistent practice of playing and praying with scripture, haggahing, meditating over the scripture, will cause one to thrive. I entered seminary with a deep love for Jesus and a deep love for scripture, not only because scripture is an incredible mind blowing literary masterpiece, but because all scripture points to the divine. Each year during our formation courses, we were asked to set goals for ourselves. One goal that I kept throughout my years of seminary is to read the Bible, not only academically, but also devotionally. You see, I have discovered that academic engagement with scripture as entertaining and enjoyable and mind stimulating as it is, does little to engage my heart devotionally and transform my way of being. I have struggled to find a heart connection with the Bible. In May 2020, I needed to prepare a spiritual practice to share as an opening experience for a course I was taking. While I was searching for something to do, I stumbled across Ignatian contemplation and decided to use it to guide my classmates through a gospel narrative. As I was preparing that assignment, I immediately realized that this was the devotional way of engaging with scripture that I had been searching for since first writing that goal in 2017. 500 years ago, Ignatius of Loyola, in a way, also stumbled across this practice. 
while recovering from a near fatal cannonball injury, he spent almost a year convalescing at home. He had only two books to entertain him. Can you imagine? One of those books was The Life of Christ. It was through this book that God transformed this whimsical daydreamer's life. Margaret Silf writes in her book, Inner Compass, An Invitation to Ignatian Spirituality, quote, he began to find himself in imagination, present in the scenes, conversations, and stories of the gospels. And he began to participate in the plots of these stories. It was the start for him of an adventure into imaginative prayer that was to become a most powerful catalyst for the growth of his personal relationship with God, end quote. Ignatius's relationship with God grew so deep that he dedicated his life to leading others to spiritual transformation. He recorded his methods in his journal, later publishing it in a book, The Spiritual Exercises, which includes the practice of contemplation and many other rich spiritual practices. He began a religious order called the Society of Jesus or the Jesuits that continues to this day, blessing many in the name of Jesus. As I have spent over a year, mostly stuck in my home due to the pandemic, I have struggled on many levels, emotionally, psychologically, physically, socially. But even in the midst of the difficulty where I see myself failing on so many levels, I have experienced deep spiritual growth. I give my capstone project the credit for this shimmering light in the midst of my gloom. For this project, I have participated in personal daily prayer sessions using Kevin O'Brien's book, The Ignatian Adventure, Experiencing the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius in Daily Life. This book has served as a spiritual guide, leading me through the entirety of St. Ignatius's spiritual exercises. As I Hagah meditate on biblical stories, I feel myself being transported back to ancient times. It's as if I am there with Jesus and his companions. Even though I have not yet been able to travel to the Middle East with Dorothy Jean and Kevin, through Ignatian contemplation, I have felt the intense Middle Eastern sun baking my skin and smelled the fishy scent of the Sea of Galilee. I have seen the crowds shoving each other as they vie for the opportunity to speak with Jesus or simply touch the hem of his garment. I have heard the pigs screech as they hurl themselves off a cliff. And I have tasted all sorts of foods as I have eaten with Jesus again and again and again. When the father sprinted to and embraced his son who returned home licking his wounds following a series of incredibly foolish decisions, I felt the arms and the tears of my recklessly extravagant divine parent embracing me. When I tried to explain the remorse I felt about my incredibly foolish decisions in life, God did not shame me. God celebrated my presence. I could feel deep within myself that nothing that I could do can separate me from the love of God. For me, playing and praying with scripture has become a full sensory experience that causes me to embody the love of God in ways I have not previously been able to do. Now, because the focus of my Master of Divinity degree is not only for my spiritual, personal spiritual formation, but also to shepherd others as they are being spiritually formed, 
by God's spirit, my capstone project did not end with my personal engagement with Ignatian spirituality. I have in introduced Ignatian contemplation to my congregation and have discovered that some find this practice more engaging than others do. Many of my congregants have such strong impulses to dialogue that they cannot keep from chatting about what they are noticing during the contemplation. This of course is a distraction as hands are flying all over the screen while some are trying to focus on the story. <sighs> Hi, hi, we are a work in progress. They are learning to think inside their heads and I am learning how to adapt. Even though it is a challenge, I love to see their enthusiasm for entering the stories. I wanted to get some experience leading hearing people in this practice as well. So I put together a six session group contemplation experience based on the spiritual exercises. Although six sessions does not adequately cover all the riches that Ignatian spirituality offers, I carefully chose biblical narratives to represent each section of the exercises to whet participants' appetites so that they will hunger for opportunities to feast on even more biblical narratives. Once I had my curriculum developed, I invited my friends and colleagues to engage in this practice with me. 15 people agreed to join me via Zoom to play and pray with these narratives. The participants were eight pastors, three seminary students, and four lay church members from 13 communities of faith and four states and two denominations. It's good to see several of you here on Zoom today. After our six weeks together, each participant was kind enough to complete a survey, giving feedback about their experiences with the spiritual practice. The variety of experiences shared was amazing, and I would love to share some of them with you. However, I think a better use of the remainder of our time together would be for us to experience a taste of this spiritual practice together. So because of time, time constraints, this is going to be a fast sampling, so strap on your seatbelts. Normally, I would read through the passage twice, but today I will only read it once. The passage I have chosen for us to contemplate is Luke 8, verses 22 to 25. Jesus calms a storm. So as I read through the passage with questions and very brief pauses, feel free to let your mind wander to wherever God's spirit is leading you. I encourage you to experience the story as if you were there. Before we begin, I will light my candle, representing Christ's presence with us today. And I will pray for the following graces. To know Jesus more intimately. To love him more intensely. And to follow him more closely. Let's take a few centering breaths, breathing in God's spirit and breathing out anything that distracts you from being in God's presence. As I share my screen, I invite you to enter the story. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. 
Look around you as you climb into the boat with Jesus. Notice who else is with you. What do you see as you look out over the sky and the waters of the Sea of Galilee? Do you feel the breeze coming off the water? What is your mood? So they put out and while they were sailing, Jesus fell asleep. As you sail across the sea, feel the gentle motion of the boat. Listen for birds singing as they fly overhead. Are you tired? Does the motion of the boat and the music of the birds cause your eyes to close as Jesus's did? Suddenly, a windstorm swept down on the lake and the boat was filling with water. They were in danger. Feel the wind slapping you in your face, jerking you out of your serenity, throwing you into a state of panic. Watch the cool water slosh over your feet as it fills the boat. Does this cause your heart to pound inside your chest? They went to Jesus and they woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. As you wake up, Jesus, do you feel the fear of death? What do you expect Jesus to do for you? And Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was a calm. Watch as the raging waves suddenly stop. Do you feel your adrenaline level decrease as the sea becomes still? What emotions are you feeling now? Jesus said to them, where is your faith? Does Jesus look at you as he speaks? How do you react to his question? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him? Do you feel fear and amazement? Is, if Jesus has the power to command nature, what does this mean for you as one of his followers? Now, if we were doing this contemplation together in an hour long session, we would have gone through this passage much slower and we would have had more time to linger here at the end of the scene. I would invite you to a colloquy, a conversation with the divine to explore what God is saying to you personally through the story. After 10 minutes or so, I would close the silence with a spoken prayer. Then I would invite you to share about your experience. It is amazing to me how the sp spirit speaks to people so differently using the same story. In our sharing time, we are blessed by each other's imaginations. 
Unfortunately, we don't have time to share our revelations today with one another. I do hope, however, that this short contemplation has whetted your appetite for more. I would be happy to point you to resources to do this on your own, or if you would like to do this in a group, let me know. I would love to continue exploring this spiritual practice in a variety of settings with diverse people groups. You can contact me through my um, EMU email address, which is just my first name, last name, emu.edu. Let us close in prayer. God, thank you for your presence here with us today. Thank you that when we cry out to you in the midst of our own raging seas, you see us and calm our hearts. Thank you for the gift of Ignatian contemplation and how it has drawn me and many others over the centuries closer to you. May we go from here seeking to praise, reverence, and serve you always. Amen.